counting sort what it does is uh, it will just take an array over a given range i think many of you might have might have already used it uh, let's say one one uh, analogy with this counting sort is uh, you are counting the frequency of all the lower case characters so you take an array of size 26 and you keep on incrementing the frequency so in that case if you want to print it in sorted order you can go from 0 to 25 and say how many times it occurred like let's say i have a b a b a if you are counting the frequency of all the characters in this string so what you would do is uh, let's say you just have a b you know the ascii value is 97 and this is 98 so you might just uh, subtract whatever is the character from the base of the number system and you get zero and if you subtract b from the base of the number system you will get one so this is a base 26 system right because it is from a to z which is 97 to i think 122 and uh, if you if you just subtract it with the with the smallest value in this base then it will range uh, starting from zero so if you do that maybe you can count the frequency of all of this and if you go this will be 3 and this will be 2 now if you want to if you wanted to sort them you can just pass through it and print a these many times and print b these many times so that is one way to to sort to get the element sorted as well right in counting sort you have to know the range of items because if you don't know the range then how big an array you will make you don't know how big the array will be right so you will have to have a range so once you have defined the range now you can create that size of an array and you can start to uh, count the frequency of all the elements so let's just take an example that i will be getting all the digits which will be in the range of 0 to 9 i am getting all the digits and as soon as it is said digits it is in the range of 0 to 9 in the decimal number system so uh, let's say that i am getting an array 1412752 so let's say this is the array which i'm getting as an input one after the other <clears throat> okay now if i know that zero to nine is the range my step one will be to create an array of this size zero to nine so zero one two three four five six seven eight nine okay now once we are done with this everything will have a zero uh, value in the beginning and uh, we can pass the elements from left to right and uh, keep incrementing the frequency so for one the frequency all of them had frequency zeros right so let me write zeros for everyone when i see one i will create increment its frequency when i see four i will increment its frequency when i see one it will be two when i see two this will be one this seven will make it one five will be one and when i go to two this will be incremented to two and you are done so once you are done uh, then you will have this array this is the frequency array now once you have found the frequency array you can simply pass through it and print but then uh, this counting sort actually uh, gets used in the next algorithm which is the radix sort and so this has one added step right if you just go ahead like let me just uh, tell you step wise and then we can discuss on that so let's say step two so step two would be to convert this frequency array to a cumulative frequency so you can take the same array and convert it to a cumulative frequency array i'm not taking any extra space it is the same array so i can just keep adding from left to right and that will become a cumulative frequency array so 0 2 4 4 5 6 6 7 7 7 right now the step 3 says that you have to uh, basically sort the array so let's say the sorted array what will be the sorted array so what will be the size of this sorted array same number will that be same as cumulative frequency um, no. no like the number of elements to be Element. sorted yeah yeah okay so let's first understand the process then we will discuss on the steps why that why it was done so let's say that uh i have made seven spaces for these seven items now i i can't pass from left to right and fill this up but i have to pass from right to left 
So first let's go through this algorithm. Then we will see why, why that was done. So if I pass from right to left, the first item is two. You go to index two because the index here is the value and the value it stores is the position where it should be. So it says that it is it should be at position four, but the cumulative frequency is counted starting with one, not with zero. So when it says that position four, it, it means position three should hold two. And now one instance of this two is gone. So decrement one instance from there. And this will now represent three. Okay. Now you go, go to five. You come to five. Five is the value, which is the index of C, uh, cumulative frequency. The six is saying that it should be present at index five. So you place five at index five, decrement its frequency, reach to seven. Now go to index seven. This is saying index seven, which is six. So place it here, reduce it to six. Go to this two, reach here to two. See that it is saying index three, which is index two. So at index two, you place two and, and make it two. Go to one. When you reach to one, you see index one is holding value two, right? So that means one should be placed at two minus one, which is one and decrement it to one. Now you are at index, uh, index four, right? I mean, value four. So go to index four, five means five minus one. So place four here and reduce it to four. Any, when you reach to one, then uh, you see one is saying one, which means one minus one zero. So place one here and make it zero and you are done. So you have got the sorted array. Okay, so this is a three step process. Now, first, let's talk about uh, why did we do from right to left in the third step and not from left to right. So if you do from right to left, then you are actually maintaining that if there are two values in the array, which are exactly the same, like let's say uh, this two and this two are same, right? So when you sort them, they will, they should come together, right? And whenever they come together, if you want to maintain the ordering that this two, since it is to the left of this two, should always be in the left side whenever you are sorting it, then that sorting algorithm is called a stable sorting algorithm. Stable sorting. And if you want this relativity to be maintained in the sorted array, you have to do it from the right side because you see that if you do it from the left side, this cumulative frequency will tell you what is the rightmost position of two. Like if you look at two, what was the initial value? It was four, right? Two's initial value was four. This means it is saying it is the fourth index where two should be placed. And once this two is placed, then only the next two comes. And then by that time, it will say index three. So you see, it is just uh, crossing uh, the order. It is not maintaining the stable algorithm, right? So to maintain the stability of this sorting, that if the, the relativity should be maintained, if two on the left side has occurred before two on the right side, when they come together, the order is still the same. That is, if you want the algorithm to be stable, you have to sort from the right side and not from the left side. Okay. Another thing is, why did we do step two? Like I could have just flown through the frequency array and printed it, right? And it, it would have been sorted. But that is for the same reason that uh, you do not just want to uh, sort an item. Like let's say this could have been structure, objects of classes or structures, right? Structure nodes. And you are sorting based on a value. In that scenario, you cannot just print the value. You have to also store the structure at the correct stable sorted way, right? So you cannot just say that my frequency is this, I will just print it because this is not holding the information of the entire object or the entire structure. Right. So there can be so many variables in your structure, but I'm just sorting based on one variable. So I can't just print that variable. I will have to get that entire array of objects sorted. So that is why this step two is needed as well. So I hope everyone got it right. And uh, the range, let's say this is R. Then uh, your space complexity will be order of R plus N where n is the number of items you had taken the sorted array here to uh, maybe store it as a separate entity. Or if you want to overwrite that, 
if you want to overwrite uh, then this is not required but if overwriting is not allowed then r plus n if overwriting is allowed then order of r okay now coming to time complexity you know that you are going through the entire item once then you are going through the range of items once and then again you are going through the entire item once n plus r plus n and let's say the range is low so for a low range this will be equivalent to order of n a linear time sorting algorithm if the range is small and if you have let's say 10 items and your range is 10 to the power 5 this will not be feasible right this is even greater than cube and whatnot even to the power 4 it is greater than that so it is also used in a special scenario that the range is not too large range is a small range and uh, you might have n value large so that you get a linear time on sorting okay i would like to announce about our dsa live training program which will guarantee understanding of every programming concept it makes you interview ready in just three months and it will maximize your offers so that you get the best possible pay and in the best possible company you can all the sessions will be live interactive sessions so you will get the feel of a live class and you can ask all your doubts throughout the class in order to get more details please whatsapp us on this given number